Hello everybody, and welcome to the Painter New Channel here on YouTube. My name is Chris Papa, and today I have another really exciting painting tutorial in store for you. Today we are going to paint this dramatic uh, lake landscape scene, and I'm going to cover a lot of techniques in this video. We're going to paint um, a background sky with a sunset and some clouds. We're also going to paint some background mountains, some rocky ledges, some background trees, foreground trees, mist, a lake, uh, waves coming from the lake and to the sandy beach in the front with this boat. So there's really a lot packed into this tutorial and I'm really excited to share my techniques with you today. Now if you want to just dive right into the tutorial, I am going to leave the time where you have to skip to right here for those of you who are impatient. But for everybody else, I first want to just spend a couple of minutes giving you a little bit of background as to why I made this video and why I'm so excited to share it with you. In this video, I am going to be sharing a very different and very interesting technique that I use all the time for creating beautiful dramatic scenes like this completely from my head. I did not use any reference photo or I didn't look at anybody else's paintings to get any ideas for this piece of art it pretty much created itself. And you'll see what I mean when you start watching the video and my technique from the very beginning. So the reason why I made this video is I've been talking with a lot of you and, you know, reading posts on the Painter New Facebook group. And, you know, as a new artist, I find that a lot of people kind of have a, lot, a hard time with um, self-confidence. You know, like, you'll look at um, a painting tutorial and get intimidated and say, oh, I can never paint that way. But, you know, this channel is called Painter New for a reason. When I originally started the channel, I thought Painter in You was the perfect name because there really is an artist buried deep within all of us. So no matter what your skill level is right now, like anything, painting just takes practice and time and patience, and you are going to be amazed, um, you know, over time how good of an artist you will become from following videos like this and just learning and practicing. This is supposed to be your own therapeutic, fun and relaxing activity. It's not supposed to be stressful and intimidating. So don't ever, you know, kind of let yourself down and say, oh, I can't paint like that, because it's not true. You can. And when you start watching how I did this painting, you're going to be amazed that this painting pretty much generated itself from a blob of black and brown that I smeared all over the canvas. And so I'm really excited to share this with you. It's a fun technique that I discovered, and I have found that using this technique has completely set me free from any stress and anxiety I ever have when I'm trying to paint from an image or following someone else's tutorial. The reason why is because when you start with somebody else's photo or by following a tutorial, you see what the end result is supposed to be. And the problem with that is as an artist, you know, you're going to put your own creative spin into the painting, no matter what, no matter how hard you try to recreate an exact replica of an image or another tutorial you're following, it will have your own spin on it. And as a result, because you had that kind of preconceived idea of what it should look like at the beginning, that is what is going to let yourself down in the end. Because when you look at your painting, which will come out beautiful, you're going to say, oh, it doesn't look like what it was supposed to look like. But if you showed it to somebody else who never saw your reference that you were using, they would never have that preconceived image of what it should look like. And they are going to look at it in a totally different light than you would. So the style of painting that I'm going to show you is intended to um, relieve that anxiety and it will make you more satisfied with your painting in the end. One other thing is um, artists frequently say, oh, you know, I can only paint from a picture so far and I can only paint from following a tutorial. I can't paint just from coming up with an idea in my head. But what I'm going to show you is that painting from just from scratch with no reference, it's actually easier 
than using a picture. So please trust me, believe what I'm saying. You're gonna see when you do this video, uh, when you follow me on this tutorial, exactly what I am talking about. And you're gonna see it right from the beginning when I create, start creating this painting from a blob of black and brown. Last thing on this topic, um, just to kind of, you know, reiterate the point that anything like anything art and painting just takes practice, time, and patience. I'm going to show you a painting that I did from following a Bob Ross tutorial back at the beginning of 2014. I've been painting for about three years now. Um, I was always artistic as a kid and stuff, but like really getting into painting about three years ago. And I save this painting for one purpose and one purpose alone is to use as a benchmark to look back and see how far I've come. So here's a painting I did today um, based on just completely from my head. And here is the painting that I did in January of 2014. Quite a difference, right? So as you can see here, you know, it's not horrible, but it's not really anything that anyone would want to like hang up in their house or something you know i mean like the mountains look kind of like cartoony my evergreen trees back here are like magenta i don't know what's up with that um these are all right i guess um but the highlighting and the perspective like it just it, it's not that great so um th i keep this for one reason and it's just to show everyone you know how far i've come and you know you can you can make progress as well as long as you just keep practicing. All right, and now that I'm done with my little pep talk, I hope you're just as excited to do this tutorial as I was. And why don't we go ahead and just dive right into it? Okay, so for the very first step, we're going to do something very different. I just took this bowl from my kitchen. I'm going to just mist it with some water just to kind of get the bottom a little wet. And we're going to create some very watered down dark kind of like blackish brown paint. I've got some Mars Black here. I'm gonna squeeze a pretty decent amount into the bowl. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same with the brown. I got a nice big chunk of paint right there. And I'm just gonna kind of mist that a little bit too. And now I'm gonna just mist the canvas. Very lightly, you don't want too much water on it. This is a pretty big canvas, so you hear me spraying a lot, but, um, you know, just a light coat of water. That's going to improve the flow of the paint. Now, we're going to start by pretty much doing an underpainting. Now, I did no sketch and no preparation for this painting, and what's amazing is you're going to see how the painting is going to pretty much develop itself. I'm going in with, like, a pretty large brush, kind of a medium large brush. You don't want one that's too big, because you want it to be big enough where you can get some paint onto the canvas, but small enough where it'll create kind of like different um, levels of shading as you kind of scribble it in. Now the most important step in the painting occurs right at the very beginning, and that's establishing your horizon. So this is the only step where we're going to kind of put some thought. Um, you know, usually you want to go somewhere from like in the middle section of your canvas. The higher you put your horizon, the more foreground you have to fill in, and it makes your painting a lot more difficult, and it makes your perspective a little more difficult as well. So this horizon is like where everything's going to kind of vanish into the distance, and I think for me, I'm going to make that right, pretty much right in the middle of the canvas. Now, just keep that in mind. This is a reference point. We're pretty much just going to scribble over it right now, but just keep in mind since the beginning of the painting, that your horizon is in this middle section. Um, I would recommend the middle or maybe about this low, kind of like 25% up or 50% up the canvas. And now what I'm gonna do is I am just going to smear paint all over the place. There's absolutely no um, structure here and this ends up becoming our underpainting as well as influencing what we paint. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to just, you know, and you can take your time, but I like to go quickly because I feel like that is what kind of produces the best results, right? So, you know, it look, I can already see kind of like a little ledge developing here. 
use quite a bit of water on this step, and move pretty quickly as well. See, by just, by just putting some dark paint on this canvas, I can already see the painting in the end. I'm going to have water here. There's going to be a closer cliff here to us. Maybe we'll put a lighthouse or some trees on it. There's going to be maybe a distant island over here. Maybe some larger trees here that are kind of closer to us. And eh, let's put some mountains too. Look at that. Distant mountains. Just put paint all over the place. Don't even worry about it. What happens is as you start just smearing paint everywhere, shapes develop. And, and um, because you're watered your paint down so much, some areas are thicker than others. And as a result, you pretty much end up like seeing shapes and things just develop on their own. And that's what's so cool about this, is, you know, the painting develops itself. You don't have to worry about a right or wrong, or, or does my painting look just like the picture I'm trying to paint? It doesn't matter. All right, so I took a quick break and I let that completely dry. And it's up to you now if you want to follow me and do this like a normal tutorial step by step. Um, but if not, um, you know, your painting may look totally different than mine because of that first step where you're just kind of putting paint everywhere without any thought. So, um, you know, the general next step is to cover the sky. You know, now we kind of have our land here. We kind of figured out, okay, what kind of scene is this? Um, I'm thinking it's kind of like a little cove or maybe a little lake with some mountains and trees. And, you know, maybe this is kind of like, you know, evening, sunset time. So you can do the sky whatever color you want. If you want to do a simple blue sky, you know, if you're a newer artist, you don't want to put a lot of detail and you want something easy, I would just recommend maybe like um, some Prussian blue mixed with titanium white and just cover that whole thing in blue. Um, I'm going to do something a little more complex. I have um, some titanium white, Naples yellow, and a tiny, tiny touch of quinac quinacridone magenta. And um, I'm going to make kind of, start kind of down here, making kind of like a light yellow kind of sunset. Um, but eventually that's going to blend into kind of like a lighter bluish purple. So, you know, at this point you do kind of have to start putting a little more thought, but... Either way, the painting is kind of just going, like, as you're doing it, it's kind of creating itself, which is nice. And you just think about it now kind of like step by step. And so I'm mixing here these colors, and I'm com coming up with this kind of like light orangey pink. Kind of like a peach color. And I'm just going to start going in here. Now, don't worry, it's okay if you go over your trees a little bit. I'm just kind of scribbling that in there. I might even just kind of go down in the water a little, but you know, we'll, we'll paint the water later in detail. I'm gonna, I'll keep focusing on the sky. I'm just kind of mixing that. Same kind of like, it comes up with a kind of like a light peach color. Now to achieve the light sky blue, I am using, I still have my colors from before on the palette. Um, I just missed it a little bit. I'm going to use some of the titanium white and I'm mixing that with a tiny bit of um, ultra, French ultramar ultramarine. The reason I'm using French ultramarine is because it has a slightly purple um, kind of tint to it. It's, it's a purple based blue. I typically use Prussian blue for my skies. Um, if you watch any of my other tutorials, you will see that I use Prussian blue usually. 
But in this one, I kind of want it to be like a sunset scene. So I'm thinking this purple will look kind of nice with a purple tone. All right, now one thing you're going to notice, um, blending skies can be a little tricky, but um, I just kind of learned this with experience. So notice how I'm leaving a white band here. Um, that is just the canvas that I have not yet painted. Um, I have the kind of the yellowish sunset section on the bottom and the sky blue on the top. And what we're going to do in that middle section is we're going to blend the two together seamlessly by simply using titanium white. Um, that will just kind of make them blend together nicely and you're not going to end up having like the yellow mixing with the blue giving you like a weird green which will look kind of unnatural. So I'm, I'm using like lighter and lighter color here on the sky like uh, the blue. I'm making it lighter and lighter. I'm using more and more white but I am going to actually wash my brush off soon and then just do kind of like white in the middle here and blend it all. Okay, so I just washed my brush off and I just went through pure titanium white and now I'm going to kind of continue blending the sky, this blue section downward into the sunset section with just the titanium white. you're going to see how these are going to seamlessly blend together by doing that. And while I'm here, this lower section has dried, so I'm just going to brighten that up a little bit with a little more of the magenta this time. Um, I'm mixing kind of like the Naples yellow from before, the white and the um, quinacridone magenta and I'm just going to kind of go through this, varying the colors a little bit back here will make it look very nice with that pink. But don't go overkill with it. All right, now that I'm finally fully satisfied with the sky, I'm going to just let that fully dry. I may go back through and blend it again later because I do see a few spots that um, should be blended a little better um, but you know for now I think it's good so I'm gonna just give it a break let it completely dry to the touch alright so I've let the painting completely dry to the touch and then I actually went through and I redid the sky again using the exact same steps as the last um, step that we just did going through with the um, ultramarine blue and titanium white to create the upper blue section and then the lower kind of sunset colored section with the uh, Naples yellow, uh, quinacridone magenta and um, titanium white again and blending that seamlessly into the middle. The reason I went through it again was um, with acrylic many times you have to do kind of like two coats otherwise your painting looks kind of washed out and you could see you know some of the little holes in the canvas still. I saw a lot of that up here. So this just gives it a whole second coat and makes it just look a lot more richer and um, the colors more dense. Now, I just want to pause for a quick minute again and just kind of reiterate with um, kind of the whole objective of this video. You know, I am just going with the flow. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do next. I'm just going to think about it and just do it on the fly. And you know, I'm not stressed out doing this painting at all as I would be potentially if I was following a tutorial or had a reference photo because I'm not trying to like match up and mimic something else and make it look just like something else. This is purely for my imagination. And as a new artist, a lot of people say, oh, you know, I'm still following tutorials or oh, I'm still going off pictures. I still can't paint off of a picture. But this is actually an easier way to paint than following a picture. Going and with no reference is an easier way to paint because you are not setting that kind of preconceived expectation of what the end result should be. And that is what I want you to get out of this video. As a new artist, it's easier to paint from your imagination, use your creativity. 
you can see that by just throwing in this kind of underpainting, it pretty much created the painting for us. I had no idea where this painting was going to go or what kind of landscape this was going to be. I just kind of knew it was going to be a landscape. That's the only thing I decided. Um, this approach really doesn't work as well with a still life or a portrait or something like that, obviously. This is really intended only for landscapes. Um, so next, I'm going to go through here and just keep going with my imagination. I'm thinking that I'm going to put some clouds in here. It's totally up to you. This is kind of like a paint as you go. You don't have to follow me like a tutorial. You can, but just kind of do your own thing. Uh, I'm going to start painting in some clouds. I, I really don't paint clouds that often, um, to be honest, uh, with acrylic because it's a little more difficult with acrylic. It's a lot easier with oil for the blending. Uh, but we're just going to see how it goes, and worst case scenario, I'll just paint over it if I don't like how they come out, right? What do I have to lose? For this step, I'm actually going to zoom in to this middle section here where I'm going to put my clouds. And we're using three colors here, which I'll show you how to mix in a second. Um, I am using the Ultramarine Blue again, the Quinacridone Magenta again. And um, I put yellow ochre, but you could use any yellow, like uh, Naples yellow, like I was using in the last step would be fine. And we're going to create kind of like a dark purpley gray and create kind of like the shadowy um, section of the clouds here in the middle. Okay, now you're going to kind of want to focus on this section here again that we did with the white where the uh, sunset blends with the blue sky. And um, that's kind of where our clouds are going to go. By having the clouds, it will kind of separate the two and will help um, visually blend it um, aside from the blending we did. Um, so as you can see here, I have uh, Ultramarine, Quinacridone Magenta, and Yellow Ochre, as I mentioned before, and I'm just going to start mixing those. So what this is doing is the, um, just a little bit of color theory here, the blue and the red are giving me a purple, and then I'm mixing the yellow in with it, and, you know, you're basically... By mixing these two colors together, the magenta and the yellow, that will give you like an orange, which is a complementary color to the blue. And so that is going to give you kind of this like muddy um, gray color, but that's what we want because um, you're going for a gray. And what's cool now is that this grayish color is produced with the same colors that are used in the background. And, and that's really what makes the painting look consistent. Um, you know, you don't really think about that when you're looking at it, um, but that's kind of just how it naturally happens. So I'm going in with a smaller filbert brush here, and I'm just kind of feathering in kind of the lower sections of what I'm going to make out to be some clouds. And these are going to be kind of distant clouds, so they're not going to be that tall. They're going to be kind of wide and long, and I'm going to make it get larger and wider as it comes closer to us. That's going to give it a really nice perspective um, as if the cloud is coming closer to us. And this is pretty watered down as well. Don't overdo this step. You want the clouds to be kind of small and kind of distant. You can totally skip this step as well if you're not comfortable with doing clouds. Again, the whole objective of this video is kind of like impromptu painting. I'm just darkening up even more a little on the bottom section here. Still going in through that mixture, but um, just adding it a little darker. Um, and making it less watered down and just kind of going on the bottoms of these clouds with the dark. Now is when you can kind of start thinking of the light source. Um, so the most important thing in any painting to me first is the perspective which we accomplish by setting the horizon at the very beginning. The second thing is probably lighting and the third I would say is color variation varying your colors. Um, so now is a good time to start thinking about lighting. And I'm thinking that the uh, sunset is kind of like over here on this right side, kind of shining up into these clouds. Y 
you know, I, um, I am the biggest offender of what I'm trying to teach here. I avoid painting clouds a lot of the time because I'm kind of intimidated by them because acrylic paint is just a lot harder to blend and I myself need to overcome that. So this video and painting with you and doing this tutorial for you is actually helping me overcome that anxiety of, of doing clouds. Because I'm always nervous about like, oh, I'm gonna mess up my painting by adding some clouds. What if they come out bad? But just listening to myself, to teaching this video, I just have to convince myself and say to myself, what do you have to lose? Nothing. Worst case, you learned something new and you wasted a canvas. What do you do, right? And I'm really happy with how it's coming out. So, you know, you're going to be pleasantly surprised. You're going to find your, you're going to surprise yourself many times. Now I'm going to try not to go overkill. I'm going to just do a couple more here on this side. They're going to be a little bit brighter, um, but using the same technique where you kind of start with it kind of slim and narrow and it just gets wider as it gets closer to us, darker on the bottom. And we're going to end up go going through this again with some highlights. I'm going to just extend this one a little bit more, making it larger and wider, um, giving it that illusion that it's pretty close to us, this one here. And then I think I'm going to stop. Um, I kind of did more than I would have originally planned, but I actually am loving how it's coming out. Okay, and I was going to wait for that sky to dry. But I decided, rather than just sitting and waiting, let's um, kind of multitask here. So while the clouds are drying, um, you know, we need them to dry before we do our next step with more highlights and blending, I decided I'm going to focus on kind of the rest of the painting now. And now is the point where you can start sketching and kind of just figure out where the painting's going. So on my palette, I have some, um, just a tiny bit of titanium white. I sprayed a lot of water onto here, so it's just a very light, transparent white. And I'm pretty much going to start doing a sketch now in this bottom section, um, just to kind of figure out where it's going. What's really cool about this is, do you see like how throughout the underpainting, some sections are more washed out than others? It almost naturally gives you shapes of where the objects are going to go. So the no normal natural variation and sort of the darker and lighter and washed out sections of the underpainting we just threw on there at the beginning with no thought or no rhyme or reason, that's going to pretty much show you now where the painting's going to go. It's going to draw the sketch for us. So I'm going over here and I'm going to say, all right, well, this let's start here because this is pretty easy. This is going to be the horizon where the... Um, lake or some body of water is vanishing in the distance and it looks like there's some land here so I'm gonna start just kind of drawing in um, you want to really water this down a lot it's just a reference point I'm gonna start kind of drawing in a horizontal line here of where this lake is kind of coming in it's gonna be like a little cove I'm just following um, kind of the this line of where it's like lighter and darker from the underpainting. And let's say that just kind of finishes there somewhere. Um, and you know, these are gonna be kind of maybe some medium-sized trees here. And now let's just do the same thing on the other side. So let's say that this actually comes in a little bit, the little cove. Um, I see there's like a darker spot here, so I'm just kind of going off of that. The little cove comes in horizontally. And do you see how that um, made this little cliff section here look closer to us? So that's kind of what you want. You want to vary the depth and the perspective by alternating um, what's closer and what's further. So it's going to come in here like that. 
Um, but I can kind of see here now that there is a darker spot here. So you can kind of see that little ledge just kind of naturally developing. There, so see this is just like kind of like a little mountainous ledge that's pretty close to us. And maybe we have just a couple more of these shrubs um, closer here on this side, which are going to kind of cover up this mountainous ledge. And maybe off to the side here, we're going to have a little canoe or a rowboat. And we'll start by just drawing kind of like the bottom of that. Let's just say it's beached here. And then you can simply kind of put in the sides. All right, now we're gonna go through the sky again and um, do some highlights on these clouds. On my palette, I have um, Titanium white, Naples yellow, quinacridone magenta, burnt umber, and um, ultramarine blue. It's kind of all the same colors I've been using before. And I'm going to just kind of start off. Um, I kind of don't really know what I'm going to do here yet, but let's, let's just see where it goes. Just focus on the right sides of the cloud and skip little sections of light and dark as I did here. You know, you're going to want to leave some dark spots to give you that contrast, which will really make the uh, highlights do what you're intending on them doing, which is kind of popping and making it look 3D. I'm working with kind of like a peachy pink color now. It kind of doesn't matter as long as it's just lighter for highlighting. As you could see, it's it you know it's really making the clouds start to look three dimensional and um, kind of pop out of the painting, which is what you're going for. Now, if you're having a hard time getting your horizon perfectly straight like I am, just simply take a piece of masking tape and situate it in such a way that it will produce the perfectly horizontal line. And then just go through your paint and just simply go up to the tape line, painting in your color. and then remove the tape and you have a perfectly straight horizon. Now that step is a lot harder to do if you're doing oil. You would have to wait for it to completely dry. I, my palette's still a huge mess. I'm creating more of this color mixture with all of these colors. Okay, I just put way too much blue. It's gonna be kind of this like purpley like this blue, it's like a super dark teal. I'm gonna make it like a little purple too. So do you see that? It's kind of like a dark gray. And this is just to get our base water on. Uh, we'll worry about highlighting it later. I'm using a slightly larger brush now just to block on that water. 
So now the water is blocked in, we're going to go over it in a little bit again with uh, more colors that are going to be more indicative of the sky reflecting on it. Alright, so overall I'm pretty happy with how this sky came out, but you know, I took a break for a few hours. Um, it always helps to do that and take a look with a new fresh set of eyes. And I definitely went a little overkill with the sky, in my opinion. You know, rather than looking like clouds kind of coming towards us, it looks like a bomb went off. So, what I'm going to do is just undo some of those kind of, these kind of streaks I did on the top. Um, and that's the beauty of this, is you can just undo if you need to. You know, again, with acrylic painting, it's like, what do you have to lose? Just paint over it. So, I'm just going to go over a lot of this upper section with the um, just titanium white mixed with the ultramarine blue again, the same colors we used at the very beginning when we were painting in the sky. And I'm just going to undo a lot of this unnecessary um, overkill on the clouds. I got a little carried away just because I was having so much fun with it. I guess you can say that this is the only downside to this kind of painting, is that because you're just kind of going like impromptu, things can go a little weird, a little weird sometimes, you know, you can get kind of carried away. But as you can see, uh, it's so easy to undo that that should not be a concern. And see, these mistakes are how you learn. I am so happy with how the sky looks now, and now I know that for next time, I won't do that mistake again. Um, or I may intentionally do it because I like how this ended up blending in the end. Um, it just came out even better than I had planned now um, from doing this. And that's all it's about, is going and just trying new things and learning. I'm going to just kind of put more of the blue down here. I'm really liking how that is kind of coming out. All right, now I'm going to start um, on this mountain here. And the first step is going to be having to put in, put back in some of the dark that makes it up. Um, it's going to be like treetops and maybe a little mountain ledge next to the treetops. So um, I'm going to mix my own green. This is the same ultramarine blue from before and yellow ochre. And I'm going to just make like kind of a dark green. This is going to almost be like a slightly lighter underpainting, but still an underpainting nonetheless. And just pretty much start scribbling in um, back some of that dark that was there before. I think one thing you've probably noticed by now is that um, very few colors are being used in this painting. Um, so far, I've used Mars Black, Burned Umber, Titanium White, Naples Yellow, um, Quinacridone Magenta, Yellow Ochre, and Ultramarine Blue. That's really not that much. Um, and I don't really anticipate using that many more colors either. So, what's nice is that you can do an entire painting by leveraging color mixing techniques, as I did. You know, I made my own green here. In many of my other works, you may have seen my other tutorials, I use hooker's green and sap green a lot, but in this one I wanted to, to mix my own greens. It's totally up to you. Um, you know, you don't have to use the same colors I'm using. And I say that a lot. Um, people frequently ask me, what colors are you using? Can you put a list of the colors at the beginning of the video? And I do that just as a reference and as a courtesy. But just because I'm using, you know, for example, ultramarine blue, doesn't mean you have to use ultramarine blue. You could have done your sky with Prussian blue, and, you know, that would have been beautiful as well. It just would have had a slightly um, greener tone to it but it still would have looked great, looked great nonetheless. It doesn't have to be exact. So again, kind of going back to the beginning, like don't try to be exactly what I'm doing here. 
do your own thing and just learn how to paint. I'm not teaching you what to paint, I'm teaching you how to paint, and that's what's important. And maybe um, I'm going to go in now with the burnt umber that I just have left on my palette here and even, even darken up a few spots. Maybe those are just like little, little sections of cliff poking out between the trees. All right, so I took a little break and I let that dry. And now we're just gonna continue again with putting more highlights onto this mountain here. On my palette, I have pretty much the same colors, um, Naples yellow, ultramarine blue, and I added some um, unbleached titanium white for the, uh, the brighter highlights that I'm gonna end up putting down here towards the sunset. Um, I again missed my palette as usual. I just dipped my brush in a little bit of water and I'm just going to mix a light green here again, like we did before. It's just repeating the same steps, really, as before. Um, it's just varying your green. It's going to be more of a bright yellowy green now, because um, we kind of put, like, our darker base underpainting, and now I'm just going to go in with this filbert brush. Um, this is, like, a medium filbert brush. I actually should probably use a slightly smaller one, but we'll just see how this goes. And I'm just gonna go on the outer edge again, highlighting. This time I'm kinda gonna like feather it a little bit though, so that it looks like little treetops that the light is hitting. And again, alternating light and dark, and just highlighting the right sides of these little mountainy sections, just because that's where the light is coming from. Now just continuing on over here on the right side of the painting while the other side's drying, I have the same colors on my palette still. Um, I just decided I'm going to darken up this uh, section in the trees a little bit to give some like shadows. Um, so I'm just adding a little bit of uh, Mars black and burnt umber and creating kind of like a watered down dark brownish black. And I'm just going to scribble in some shadows real quick just to darken this up a little. It was a little too light for my liking. You want some contrast um, for the leaves that we're going to paint on these bushy trees to contrast against. So you need dark so that the light will stand out against it. And in order to paint these tree trunks, um, I am still using the colors on my palette uh, with the burnt umber here. I'm going to just take a tiny bit of the unbleached titanium white and lighten it up, and it'll give me kind of like a light medium brown here. Um, and I'm, I'm still using the same filbert brush. In many of my other videos, you will see that I do these tree trunks using a dagger striper brush, and I love those brushes. But uh, um, I want to show here that you don't need any fancy equipment. Um, as a new artist, you might think that you need to buy um, some special canvas or brushes, but you don't. A canvas or a brush isn't what's going to make you a good artist. What's going to make you a good artist is spending the time learning the techniques. I'm just using a... this is actually a nicer filbert brush, but you can use a cheaper one. My paint I'm using is Liquitex Basics, nothing expensive. This canvas I'm using is a 
artist's loft canvas that I bought at Michael's. And Michael's has like, they have like three like levels of canvas. This is actually the cheapest one. It's the um, artist or student level. It's like a level one canvas. I am not using fancy, expensive supplies. And I just want you to know that you don't need to either. Blows my mind sometimes, these um, people who are like art supply snobs. It's not going to add or decrease any value of the final art product itself. It's the subject matter and the painting itself is what's going to make it valuable. So, all I'm doing is going in through this like uh, kind of light brown mixture and just going vertically at the tip of this filbert brush, putting some little trunks back there, here and there. You only need a few. And then um, just kind of lighten up the mixture a little bit using a little more of the unbleached titanium white to make a very light brown. And just add a couple of highlights on the left sides of the trees. Now usually we'd be consistent with where the um, light is coming from, but see, in this case it's coming from the back, so the light's going to go out this way on this side. You actually kind of have highlights going on like both directions coming from the back. So. On the very outer edge, I'm just going to tap on a little tiny highlight on these trunks with that slightly lighter brown. Not much detail on these though. They're in the distance, so you don't really need to worry about it that much. Now with the same brush, um, I still haven't cleaned my palette or anything. I'm just going to go in with the green mixture again. Again, you can vary your greens if you'd like. And I'm just going to kind of highlight some leaves on these trees now. Remember to skip some spots. So as I was doing those, it was looking a little too minty green for my liking. So I just added a little bit of hooker's green and yellow ochre to just make more of like a true green. And I'm just kind of going to mix these together and make like a, just a very green, green, green. And just go in through these leaves. And now just for some final highlights, I'm going through some pretty much pure Naples yellow and just highlighting the very outer left edges of some of the leaves here and there. All right, and while I'm here and I still have, I have a huge mess on my palette, but um, up here I still have this like brown and black and the unbleached titanium white. Those are the colors I'm going to use to create some cliffs here. Um, so I'm just going to start by darkening it up again. Uh, this is just the uh, Burnt Umber and Mars Black. I uh, misted my palette a little bit. And I'm just going to kind of come back in and darken this up because we had we got some of, I think, the sky before on here, that these white spots. So, you know, we are going to layer highlights on here, but I just want to darken it up first. Just darken up the whole thing. Over here I have a little bit of white on the top of this rock. I'm just going to leave that there because that'll just kind of become highlight, I guess. And now, you could do these rocks with a palette knife or a brush. I like using the brush. I'm just going to lighten up the brownish mixture a little tiny bit with a little bit of unbleached titanium white. And we're going to like gra slowly and gradually lighten it. And just repeat those steps that we just did, um, but just focusing on highlighting the outer left edge of these rocks now, and skipping dark sections, as we always do. I'm 
I'm gonna leave this section right here like pretty dark because we want something to for contrast. Now going a little lighter. And just keep going with this technique of layering lighter on top of the dark and focusing on where the light's coming from, getting lighter and lighter until you feel your cliffs are complete. All right, now I'm happy with how those mountains, those little cliffs came out. And real quick, I just have a confession to make. So I absolutely hate knife painting. I hate painting with a palette knife. I find it really difficult and you don't have much control. Maybe I just need more practice, but a lot of people like to do cliffs with a knife. I've tried it before. They've come out pretty good, but I like a brush better. I just feel like you have more control and I almost like this more blended look that it gives. Um, to me, it looks like it flows more naturally, but that's totally personal opinion and so um, you know for many of you who may be learning how to paint and see a lot of other artists use a knife I just want you to know that you can also achieve the same effect with a brush and I've gotten really good at working with a brush and creating cliffs like this just because I like working with it better and last on this um, little cliff section here um, I still have this huge mess of paint all over my palette from the last few steps I'm gonna take a fan brush and just kind of take some of the greenish yellow mixture from before and just put in a little tiny bit of like grass that's kind of like bleeding out of the forest into the cliff. So watch what I'm going to do here. Just tap that on to the top there, that top section. And kind of blend it in to the cliff and leave dark spots in between. So I'm gonna leave a little dark spot right here. And it'll give you this look that like there's grass that's kind of continuous, um, continuously growing into the cliff. All right, and I know we're kind of going back and forth like side to side from this side to that side and bouncing around a little bit, but that's kind of what happens in a painting, and especially when you're doing an impromptu painting like this, you're going to find yourself just going with the flow. So I'm going to go back to this side now that it's completely dried. Letting this side dry was very important because we're about to paint some mist now. And the reason why that's important is if you don't let it completely dry, when you go to tap in your white for the mist, it's going to smear with the colors under it and you're going to end up having like a green mist, which will look really bad. So on my palette now, I just have a tiny bit of uh, just pure titanium white and I'm taking this kind of medium, large, dry brush. It has to be dry. That's very important. And just take the corner of it and just like tap the corner of it into the titanium white just to get a little bit of white on it. Okay. And... Now, we're just going to come in, um, I'm just going to move from right to left and lightly tap in the mist by just touching that same corner onto the canvas and, you know, just giving, varying the pressure as needed. Now don't go overkill with this. Um, I know I say that a lot and then I end up going overkill, but it is very important to do this kind of sparingly. And vary the height of the mist too. That gives it a really neat effect. So see, I'm gonna go a little taller right here. All right, and as usual, I told you not to go overkill, and then I went overkill, <laughs> but I'm happy with how it looks. So, um, you know, with this kind of painting, like I said, it, you just go with the flow, and if you don't like how something came out, you can undo it. If you wanted to undo that, you would just cover the mountain in a darker green again and repeat the steps of when we were highlighting it before. 
That's the beauty of acrylic, you can just undo your mistakes. Okay, now while we're here, for the next step, we're going to go through and do the whole water section again. So I added a few colors to my palette. They're the same ones we used on the sky, because think about it, now the water is going to be reflecting the sky. And I know we did an initial base coat here of the water, but this is going to be, you know, the actual water surface now. And we may even go through and do some waves and things like that later. But um, Naples Yellow, Quinacridone Magenta, Ultramarine Blue, and I have a little bit of Burnt Umber here, and a tiny bit of Titanium White off to the side there. I'm going to make that same kind of peachy orange that we did originally with the sky, uh, the sunset. And that's just the Quinacridone Magenta mixed with the Naples Yellow. And I'm putting a little bit of uh, Titanium White in that too. And maybe even a tiny, tiny, tiny touch of the blue. I'm adding more white to that. There we go. That's a nice, bright, kind of peachy color. The same, you want to just match your sunset. And I've uh, wet my palette. It's, it's pretty wet and my brush. I'm using that same brush we used up here on the mist. And I made that a little too light. There, that's better. I'm just way back here, just start lightening it up. Now's when you can start thinking of like cutting off the rocks like I'm doing here, just going like horizontally with this. This is like a flat brush, so it's good for this. I washed my brush, I added a little more titanium white on the side here, and I'm just now going to make a purpley mixture, just like we did on the sky before. This time I'm going to add a little bit of uh, burnt umber to it though, because that's going to give it a nice, like, watery teal tint to that, to that purple that we're trying to create here. Trying and failing to create. <laughs> okay, let's see. Oops. Just splashed some paint everywhere. Okay, this is kind of what I'm after. This kind of like dark teal kind of color. That sort of matches the sky. And I'm going to just come down here and lighten it up and blend it in with that sunset we just did. It's easier to scribble it in like I'm doing here. And then once you're done scribbling, go through with these like kind of swift brush strokes to kind of blend it all together. And I'm just being careful here because I don't want to mess up my detail on my mountains, but I may just have to re-highlight those. I probably should have thought of that first, but oh well. Easy to fix and easy to redo. Not the end of the world. And actually up front here, I'm just going to go in through the a lot of the burnt umber, because this is going to be kind of like the beach. And I'm just going to start painting in that beach here. You can also mix a little bit of yellow ochre that will give um, kind of a nice like sandy dirt texture.
you're going to find that when you're painting, um, the order in which you do your steps, a lot of the time, just closely correlates with the colors you happen to have on your palette at the time. And, you know, we do that just because we don't want to waste paint. So why, you know, while you have it there, might as well. I decided I'm going to make the water not come as close, so that's why I'm going up further right now with the Burnt Umber. I want the beach to end a little further back. I, th I think that there was a little bit of a perspective issue before when it was coming really close to us. There we go. See, now it's going to be really easy to paint some like waves and things where like the beach is blending in with the sand. While I'm here and I have the burnt umber on my palette still, I'm just going to keep going in this foreground section here, uh, which is going to be our beach. All right, and now I'm going to take a break and I'm just going to let that dry f until it's completely dry to the touch for about 20 to 30 minutes. All right, now for this next step, we're going to focus on the water and the areas immediately surrounding the water. And we're going to start by working on this little beach section. So on my palette, I just mixed a little bit of yellow ochre and the burnt umber. And I'm going to kind of go in through here like I was before. Um, but this time, the thing I'm going to do different is I'm going to use a little bit more of the yellow ochre. and use a little more of that back here in the water and kind of like blend it in with the water. Still not going any further than we were before, um, but just blending that like right there. Now in the very corners that are like close to us, and in the middle here, I'm going to pretty much just leave the burnt umber that was there before. Maybe just here and there put a very light scribble or a few strokes of this lighter mixture with the yellow ochre, but really kind of leaving it pretty dark. See, I'm just putting a few kind of like horizontal scribbles in of the lighter and you know I'm just kind of mixing this all it's kind of like a watered down it's almost transparent this kind of brownish yellow mixture now over here we are going to do rocky cliffs the same way we did on the side over here the exact same technique with the same colors uh, the unbleached titanium white the burnt umber and tiny bit of Mars Black. And, you know, before I kind of mentioned that we were going to do trees there, but I, I think I changed my mind. Um, I think it will just look nicer with just some rocky cliffs to kind of be consistent. And I think I might even put some little bit of tiny bit of mist coming off the lake or over in here later to add some balance, because why would this side be misty and this side here wouldn't be? So we'll do that later. Now what we're going to do with just some titanium white and that same small filbert brush that I just washed off and I sprayed the palette to get it a little wet, we're just going to go in and start painting in some water lines against the rocks. So to do that, just simply go in the back here and just start drying the water in by just doing horizontal lines close to the rocks where the water, I guess, is like breaking against the rocks. Going outward in these kind of like horizontal lines that cut the rocks off. And feel free to like squiggle your brush around a little bit to give the effect of um, some small ripply waves
if you want to do the ripples, you can make them more ripply as you get closer to the beach, but in the distance you want them to be pretty much horizontal because they're really far in the distance, so you're not going to see them rippling as much. All right, now we're going to have a little bit of fun here, just painting some waves that are splashing on the beach. And we're still just going to use the pure titanium white for now. And just kind of go in lightly and horizontally and make, kind of start making the shapes of your waves. These are going to be um, some small waves. You can even start making some of them curl over and, you know, start splashing onto the beach. So, you know, like here's one right here that is curling over. And I'm going to just make it splash down like this, kind of like when we paint waterfalls. It's kind of the same technique. Let's make this a really wide one. This is a very easy way to paint waves that I'm doing here, um, just because it only involves using white. You know, you can make some more complex waves with light going through them and stuff like that, but for something like this, I um, don't want to go too crazy. And then, like, where it's splashing on the beach, you can kind of make some designs of, like, where the water line is ending. Do you see that? Now I'm watering down the white a lot, and it's going to make kind of, like, almost like a transparent white. And I can just kind of, like, highlight. I'm, like, coloring in these really shallow sections of water that the waves are making. See how simple that is just to make some really basic waves. Um, you know, if you were doing a more elaborate seascape that was like a pure seascape scene, you know, you might want to do something more involved, but this is just a really simple way to do waves. And while I have the titanium white on my palette still, uh, I'm just going to take a large, dry filbert brush, and kind of like I mentioned a minute ago, I'm going to create some mist over here, too. And maybe a little bit of mist on the water. Let's see. So maybe in this little um, alcove right here, we have some mist coming up. Very little bit of paint here, not much. All right, maybe a little more than a little bit, but um, it's kind of cool. It's giving it almost this, like, mysterious, stormy look. Someone actually commented on one of my videos and said that my paintings have kind of an eerie, mysterious look to them. And I don't intend for that to happen, but it kind of just happens, and um, I kind of like it, so <laughs> it is what it is, right? Okay, now we're going to start on these foreground shrubs here that we've been kind of ignoring for now. Um, I have burnt umber, titanium white, Mars black, and yellow ochre on my palette, and I misted it a little to water it down. 
I'm going to start by just mixing the Mars Black with the Yellow Ochre. That's going to give me kind of like a dark olive green. And I'm just going to start kind of filling in again an underpainting of uh, where the shrubs are going to go. And this time, you know, you're going to actually want to overlap and go into the water a little bit because these are closer to us. So you want it to appear like they're covering the water behind them. And while I still have some Mars Black on my palette, um, I sprayed a little bit of water here. And I'm going to make a very watered down, transparent um, black. Very watered down. And um, it's kind of already here, but I'm just going to add a little bit of shadow. Just a tiny bit. Like I said, it was kind of already there, but just a little more doesn't hurt. And then just thinking ahead a little bit, um, I'm also going to add some shadow around the boat because all we have left to do in the painting is the boat and um, the highlights on the trees. So uh, the light's kind of coming from the back. I'm just going to go on the kind of side of the boat here and just add some dark black shadow around it like this. And now my palette's very messy, but um, if you remember a while ago I put some burnt umber and titanium white um, intending to do the tree trunks, but then I decided to do the leaves first. So I'm, I'm just mixing those together and coming up with a kind of a medium brown. And I'm gonna start sketching in tree trunks. They're kind of already here from the white, um, but I'm just gonna make them a little stronger and more prominent now. Maybe this one's like kind of wide on the bottom and then it splits off into like a bunch of little branches. That's going to work pretty well if I paint it that way. It's kind of like a really branchy beech shrub. And I'm using the uh, dagger striper brush now for this, but you can use a filbert brush um, or even a liner brush, a script liner. I mentioned the dagger striper earlier. They're really good for drawing lines or doing tree trunks. And just to show you what that looks like, it's kind of like a sharp angled brush with a fine tip. You can use it just like a liner brush, which is really cool. So you could see as I'm painting this shrub now, I'm, um, I'm also skipping like little sections of um, like leaves, right? So you want it to look like the leaves are in front of the trunks and the branches. So make sure you do that. If you paint it all the way up, it's going to look like the trunk is in front of the tree, which kind of wouldn't make sense visually, right? So like here, this branch is going to go out, right? And I am highlighting them a little bit now too. And, you know, it's going to maybe skip through under these and come out over here. See that? It's so easy and it gives a really awesome three-dimensional 
effect. All right, and while those tree trunks are drying, um, we're going to go through them again, probably, and just highlight them a little bit, um, possibly. And we're definitely going to go in and do leaves in them, but I don't want the leaves blending in with the brown, so I'm going to wait for that to dry. And while it's drying, we're going to just multitask a little bit, and now we're going to start on the boat, the moment you've all been waiting for. So, <clears throat> I'm going to try something a little different. I have some burnt sienna and yellow ochre, and I haven't really tried this yet, but I'm going to mix them and try to make kind of like an orangey, like, woody color. The boat can kind of be any color you want, because, you know, it's an artificial, man-made object. And just start painting in individual planks of wood that make up the side of the boat. I'm just using a small filbert brush for this. And maybe this is just kind of like an old, beat-up wooden boat. You know, give it some character. So it's okay if your lines aren't really perfect, and if your colors are varying quite a bit. That's kind of what you want, actually. And on my palette, I just added a little bit of Mars Black and Ugly Titanium White. I also grabbed my Dagger Striper brush for in a few minutes. Um, I'm going to be needing that. And I'm just going through and adding a little bit of Mars Black to the raw sienna. Or sorry, that's burnt sienna, not raw sienna. And it's making kind of like this dark orange. And I'm just going to add back some of the shadows that I just painted over. And just here and there I'm putting a little bit of a highlight just to give the impression of wood planks that make up this boat. And I'm really happy with and I'm really happy with how this boat is coming out now. Um, so as the last step, I just added a little bit of burnt umber to this kind of mess I have on the palette. And I'm gonna put a little bit of the yellow ochre, the same color we used to create the sand before. And what I'm going to do is, behind the boat, I'm going to create some kind of highlights that indicate, like, little tracks um, of when the boat was pulled out of the water. So starting from the back of the boat, I'm just going to kind of put on, like, these, some, like, lines. Just very subtle. That go back into the water. And maybe some highlights around it too to indicate like little mounds of sand where you know the person was stepping while they were moving it into place over here. Then even off to the side here, maybe we just put a couple of little footsteps that stepped away from the boat. And last but not least on the boat, um, I'm just kind of using the same colors, but I'm going to create some, just some oars leaning here off of it. And these are going to be kind of like half buried in the sand as well. So you're going to kind of cut it off on the bottom like that. See how I did that? And this one on the bottom here is going to just stop.
All right, I think I'm gonna say the boat is done. Uh, I put a lot of detail into that, but it looks really rustic and very artistic. I really like it a lot. All right, and now I'm just gonna go through all of the tree trunks again um, with burnt sienna, raw umber, and unbleached titanium white, kind of like lightening them up, giving them some highlights. Same exact steps as before. Okay, and now we're ready for the absolute last step on the painting, and that's gonna be finally painting some leaves into these foreground trees. Now, because they're foreground trees, the leaves have to be larger and rounder and more visible. Um, unlike background trees where I could just use like a filbert brush, I'm actually gonna use this round brush. Um, and I'm just gonna mix um, some yellow ochre and some, I think this is cobalt blue, I believe. And I'm gonna create just kind of like a medium yellowy green. And with this round brush, I'm gonna kind of like dot in individual leaves. Now this does take a lot longer than painting like background trees like with a filbert brush, but you need to do this because they're closer to you so they're obviously going to have more detail. And just keeping in mind the light source again, To paint these leaves with this brush, you just kind of like do a bunch of little dots almost. And you can start to see them developing there. Now I'm using like a medium green right now so that later I can use a brighter yellow and highlight the sides of these even more. Even so, I'm kind of going quick. I'm not spending, you know, I could spend a lot more time doing every individual leaf, but I don't want to do that. I just, I want it to look a little more impressionistic, I guess. Now I'm going in through some burnt umber in some of these sections because you want to remember to leave some dark. So I still want to have this cool leaf texture, but over here I'm using the burnt umber, and the reason why is so that when I now go, say, like right to the left of that here, I can use a brighter color, and it will contrast against that and have an individual section of highlight right here. All right, so I think I'm gonna say the painting is complete now. I am so happy with how it came out. And there were a few additional um, things that I did off camera, but it's nothing I didn't already show you. So I did go through this section here and did all the leaves on these trees the same way I showed you here. And I also went through all of the tree trunks again and just added one last final layer of highlight because um, they just still were looking a little too dark and flat. Um, and then I also just went around on the very outer edges of the boat a little bit, like right out over here on the very outer like rim of the boat. I highlighted that a little bit and then I signed the painting in the corner. Don't forget to sign your painting. So I'm really happy with how it came out. Again, this was just purely for my imagination going with the flow and letting the painting create itself. Um, again, I just want to emphasize the importance of that underpainting and how it pretty much created the painting on its own. I didn't even know where this was going and look at this painting we have now. It's such a nice, relaxing and serene scene and I almost wish I were there right now. So anyway, I hope you really enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new and please remember to subscribe to my channel and click the little bell on the side, uh, which will give you notifications of when I post new videos. And also please be sure to join the Painter in You Facebook group to network with other artists, see posts from me, and look at other artists' artwork. It's really a wonderful community. I highly encourage you to join that. 
and the link to that is in the video description. Thanks again for watching, and I look forward to our next video tutorial together.